Take a neutral standpoint during the dissection of the topic at hand. That's Reality Extraction with Mr. Rowe on Revolution Radio. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay. Welcome to the Cosmic Oracle Show on Tuesday, November 29th, 2016. And I am coming to you live from Sacramento, California. And it is gorgeous, and I am freezing cold. It's winter here. I have a sweater and Uggs and a scarf, and I'm just kind of in for the winter chill today. And so I don't know where you're calling from, but or listening listening from, but um, winter is definitely here, uh, and we have this change in season, uh, especially if you're in the South Dakota area. I just looked at some film footage from the DAPL, the Dakota Access Pipeline people, and it is snow-covered mountains there, and it looks really cold. So we're going to have a, a warm and inviting and cozy at, uh 12 o'clock midnight show today um, um, with a friend of mine that I'm very excited to have uh, on the show and uh, her name is Faye Vale and she is an amazing being. I got to talk with her at length last night and she is a galactic artist and she's inspired by interplanetary energies and she gets guidance from the universe and this all began her creating of her artwork uh, began in 2007 after a, a supernatural experience that she had that left her un, with an unconscious drive to produce images and symbols that could only be described as extra terrestrial in nature. And so Faye will be coming on shortly on the show, and she'll be our guest today, and I think you will find her fascinating and fantastic and warm and uh, she'll open up your heart and uh, and talk to you about all of this uh, information that she brings forth and was activated by her extraterrestrial experience and Faye lives in uh, she lives in one of my favorite places on the whole planet, and that is Glastonbury, England. And so she will be coming in shortly, and we're just really excited to have her. And uh, so without further ado, I would like to talk to you about uh, Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Uh, we are the number one listener, largest internet radio station in the world. The world, and that is that we are a hundred percent listener supported station, and we're here really only because of your generous support. So, you are the ones that help keep us on the air and keep everything happening here. No one gets paid for anything that we do here on the station, and that includes uh, Hawk, who started this. Uh, this uh, Revolution Radio uh, back uh, in the day and has stayed with it and uh, all the people who have shows here, all the hosts, uh, also don't get paid. And that's one of the things I love about Revolution Radio is that we have the freedom really to speak our mind and to have who, whomever we like on the show uh, to bring them to you. And uh, we don't have any affiliation with any major corporations or that sort of thing. So then the way we do that is by having you, the listeners, continue to support us and at getting the truth out and that way you can do that is by donating generously and uh, we're almost to our goal it's almost the end of the month we're not quite there so we do need your donation if possible you can go to freedomslips.com and find that support button and just press support and there's all sorts of different ways that you can uh, support the station here with a donation and also we have a chat room if you go to freedomslips.com and push that chat room button uh, you can ask questions during the show on the chat as well and there's also a donate button on the left side of that screen that will show you ways that you can donate 
uh, for uh, the cause here on, on Freedom Slips. So uh, with that, we would like to then, I, I, I always check in to see how we're doing with the uh, Dakota Access Pipeline people. And uh, there was a, a Army Corps of Engineers uh, gave an eviction uh, notice that they had to be within 1,000 feet from the camp. Uh, that's their latest thing, and that they have to be out by December 5th, from what I understand. But the law of the land in the Treaty of Fort Laramie actually does give the right for uh, the Lakota, Dakota, and everyone, thousands of people now standing uh, against the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. But uh, the protesters are there, the protectors of the water are there, and there has been an increased uh, militarization uh, since the beginning of April, for sure, and the Morton County Sheriff's Department as well. So there has been um, a, a question for President Obama to you know, he has the chance to do something about it. And he had put a lot of, not a lot of energy, but energy in, in being with the uh, Dakota people before the access pipeline and saying that he would not forget them, he would not leave them, that he stood with them. But he actually has not taken any action yet. And um, part of the problem after speaking with uh, or listening to Linda, Dr. Linda Blackout, she said one of the main concerns is the cultural genocide that's been taking place there, that uh, plants for food and medicine and, and all of that has just been totally destroyed and totally disrespectful and that there needs to be a full environmental impact uh, taken and studied and they would see that uh, what they're doing really is an abomination. And so uh, you can go, there's all sorts of things that you can do to help yourself if you can't actually go there and be a part of the Dakota Access Pipeline to stop to take action with Standing Rock, there's many things that you can do. And I'll just run by a few of them right now. You can call the White House at 202-456-1111 or 202-456-1414. There's also a, a, a White House petition and you can find that at Standing Rock. It's called Standing Rock uh, WH White House. You can call the Army Corps of Engineers at 202-761-5903. You can also call the North Dakota Governor uh, Jack uh, Darlmipple, um, D-A-L-R-Y-M-P-L-E, at 701-328 2200, and you can call or email your congressional representatives and your senators, and you can also donate items at the Sacred Stone Camp. They will be there. They will be standing in solidarity, uh, despite uh, rubber bullets being uh, aimed at them and shot at them, and uh, water uh, pipes filling water, spraying on them and putting them into uh, hyperventilization. And uh, also, I understand there was a mustard gas sprayed as well at these people who you know, if you uh, go on to Facebook or at Standing Rock or uh, Dr. Linda Black Elk's um, her page and also Revolution Radio. We also have a, a, a team there. You can go on to YouTube and on Rev Radio. Uh, there's some live streaming of, of the event there. So the pipeline has to be stopped and Standing Rock Sioux need to be heard and their treaties honored. And you can donate items to uh, the Sacred Stone Camp and that is at uh, www.sacredstonecamp.org and you can also contribute to a legal defense fund uh, and that is at fundraiser.com and you can contribute to GoFundMe, also at Fund Standing Rock. 
So these are some things that you can do. Uh, you can start or even join events in your area uh, by uh, starting a, a DAPL event and uh, start talking about this, posting about it, and tweeting about this to get others to join in demanding that the Dakota Access Pipeline be stopped. So um, we're on it, uh, stay in tune with it, and uh, uh, thank you for all those water protectors that are there now. And I understand that uh, December 4th, the veterans uh, will be coming out in huge force uh, to peacefully align themselves with the Standing Rock um, water protectors there. And so we will keep you informed. I know here at Revolution Radio, we will keep you informed of what's going on out there in the world. And uh, thank you for listening and being active in the world with your uh, act with what you feel is right to take a stand for and get involved in. And I mean, we can do a lot with uh, our our connections to the internet and getting the word out. But if you can physically go there, just make sure that you, if you do, that you are self-contained, meaning that you have your all your camping supplies and your warm clothes and, and that you're self-sufficient and that you're actually bringing something uh, to, the, to the stone camp. And uh, so they don't have to take care of you, but that you will actually bring not only yourselves, but uh, something to the stone camp as well. But the more people we can get there, the better. Uh, Self-sufficient people so that we can be heard and, uh, and get this stopped, uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline stopped forever. So, so there you go. So calling to all the veterans and uh, uh, thanking them in advance for their solidarity with the Stone, the Sioux Stone Camp. So, okay. So uh, I think we'll go, let me give you a little bit of a start here uh, about a little bit of background with Faye Vale. Um, I met her uh, the way I met her was online on Facebook. Uh, the Cosmic Oracle Show has a Facebook now. It's called the Cosmic Oracle Show. And you can find that on Facebook. And um, on this, uh, I have lots of friends that come through now. And this woman, uh, Faye Vell, what first drew me to her was her artwork. And um, she, the images appear to hold like a, there have a power in them that can communicate to your subconscious mind that evoke positive effects uh, with those who connect with them. And uh, Faye understands that her images have powers which help the viewers or help us to move forward in life by activating and bringing energies to the forefront that no longer serve us and are up for healing and releasing. And so we'll have her explain to her uh, some of her art and the triggers that are set in each piece of art, which can uh, open us to possibilities that we may have initially thought were beyond our earthly experience. And so Faye lives in England, in Gloucestershire, and creates a range of galactic artwork from her home in Glastonbury, uh, we'll be talking about her personal readings in art and her original signed artwork and prints and her spiritual reading cards and her greeting cards. So uh, without further ado, uh, I hear you there, Faye. Hello, welcome to the show. Hi, welcome, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually doing it, huh? We we weren't sure. We, could, <laughs> we weren't actually sure if we were going to do this or not. So, so we were able to connect. I think with me, it was like one o'clock in the morning this morning, and and you're 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 in Glastonbury. It's a little bit like five o'clock, a little after five in the evening there for you, correct? Yeah, five fifteen in the evening. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, we'll start off. Can you tell us um, a a little bit about uh, your background? 
around and and let's say let's start a little bit maybe before you had an experience were you just like the normal mom doing the normal things or were you always a little bit out there were you always a little bit sensitive or how would you describe yourself before your first uh extraterrestrial contact um just as an ordinary person a mom of three children two boys and a girl busy housewife had a job and just busy but but saying that i've, I've always been aware of um energies and uh, quite often seen what I call spirit people <laughs> but uh, never really um, told anybody about it maybe because I always felt the oddball of the family to be honest I have two sisters and a brother and uh, never felt like I belonged to the family I was thought as a child that I was adopted for some reason because I, I just didn't I was just totally different to the rest of them who just live ordinary lives but, but um, things really opened up for me as I got older mm -hmm. and and when were you what age were you when you had your experience uh, UFO or um, spiritual ones or whichever whichever you feel comfortable talking about well, we'll lots, lots of spiritual um, um, experiences where I saw um, spirit people that they, they would just look like an ordinary person and then in an instant disappear. Um, I recall once when uh, we was going to a friend's house and we went to go around the, the traffic signal and there was a man standing in the middle of the road and I'm thinking why is he standing there and I saw him as plain as plain can be he had a, a gray suit on really smart red hair he was about 25 and then all of a sudden he just disappeared and uh, I just came to the conclusion that maybe that guy was killed on that uh, crossing thing there huh. uh, and several times I saw um, spirits where things like that maybe had happened and um it, it just became the normal to me and, and I'd see somebody and just think there was real and then they would disappear and, and but um, I, I had things move on their own sometimes and this prompted me to um, get a ghost group together. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that last night I, and I was yeah, surprised yeah. I had no idea that, you, that you're a were um, more active in paranormal investigation. Can you tell us a, a, a little bit about that experience? And your name, I loved your name of your group. Oh, yeah. And um, we lived in Boston in Lincolnshire. And Boston in Lincolnshire, the Boston in USA is named after the Boston in Lincolnshire one um, because that's where the Pilgrims' fathers sailed from. But um, uh, because I uh, very often picked up spirit and um, was really interested in haunted places, i.e. for the, the history of them as well, um, I decided to get a, a paranormal group together and do a bit of investigating. And uh, because we lived in Boston in England, they were called, called the Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> several investigations and uh, very often we would do an investigation and invite maybe 10 people to come along and pay pay some money and then we would give the money towards uh, the building that we was investigating because um, most of the buildings we investigated need money uh, we had a brilliant um, investigation into a local theatre that was haunted and uh, we got many things on tape and um, apparitions as well and we got into the uh, local papers for three weeks which was brilliant plus we um, we uh, raised a hundred pound for the theatre to help with some renovations so that was good so um, after uh, we was in the paper we got on inundated with calls to go and investigate ghostly ha happenings uh, very often um, we would um, take me a medium with with us apart from myself to see whether we we picked up the same things so uh, yeah that was really interesting and uh, 
I had loads of things on um, video at the time and um, lots of stuff on tape. And then um, I went to work at a place that was extremely haunted. It was a new building, but it had been built on an old inn in um, Boston, Lincolnshire. And um, things used to move on their own. We had the clock fly off the wall and um, several of the staff who worked in the shop where, that was built there um, had ghostly experiences. So I set up a, a camera that just ran all the while in there uh, when, when it was open or, or shut. And we picked up so many things on it. But um, one of the most profound things that happened to me when I worked there is um, I used to just work till the uh, afternoon hours and uh, I was getting my, my bag and everything to leave to go home. And all of a sudden, a pair of legs walked past me. No top half, no feet, <laughs> just a pair of legs in black trousers. Uh, and it, it was amazing. <laughs> well, uh, that would get your attention, I would think. <laughs> and yeah, did, any, yeah. did anyone else see it or just you at the time? Uh, that was just me, but um, it was funny because uh, in the shop, it was a ladies' shop where we sold clothes and shoes and bags. And uh, one day we had a, a massive delivery of shoes. And uh, because because uh, we had nowhere to put them at the time, they, they were left in the office overnight. When we came in the ne next morning, every single shoe was out the box and thrown everywhere. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> and, uh, I kept I kept showing uh, everybody else the the film of what was happening, and uh, the lady who uh, ran the shop said, "Oh, I don't really believe it." No sooner had she said it than uh, one night she was cashing up, and uh, <laughs> this head appeared round her door. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, the head of a small boy, and. Uh, she did nothing but throw all the cash in the air and run. <laughs> oh, well, she became a believer then. <laughs> yeah. And also, at that place where I worked, we had the strangest thing happen. Um, at night, the, the stock room where we used to keep all the goods used to be locked up. So once the, clock, the shop was closed, uh, the store would be locked and the alarms put on, the burglar alarms. Well... Well, if you was in first in the shop, you would switch the alarms off and unlock the doors. Um, and we went upstairs and we unlocked the um, door where all the stock was kept. And then right back, there was another little room. We opened it up and right along one wall was a child's wet footsteps. There is no way that could have happened. Hmm. No way. Hmm. It makes, so, me go, makes me go cold even now when wow. I think of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, were you able to clear the clear the room and, and let's say you go about doing that? How do you go about clearing a space? Because I know we talked about it last night that it's real common in Glastonbury if someone buys a new home to have uh, a psychic or medium come in and do a blessing or a healing on the home. Yeah. And... Um, well, um, as far as I know, that place is still active. But um, what we did find out was that um, uh, it was haunted by a man from the 17th century. And um, what happened was his child was taken and um, for a little way from the shop was where they used to have a market. His child was taken and murdered. And um, this man can't rest because he's still searching for the murder of his daughter. Mm. So it was a really sad story. And uh, most of the things we've got on tape or clothes moving on their own where he's searching. Mm -hmm. and, and so usually when something, if there is this poltergeisty kind of or interdimensional kind of of energy in a room it's is it somewhere where it's been a traumatic experience or there's been a horrific experience or do you find that is normal something like that an, an attachment of some sort or 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 not you know usually it's it's because something on the earth is holding them um 
sometimes it's a gentle spirit that that's just not realized that they've passed on mm-hmm. or it's some sometimes somebody who's just genuinely attracted uh, attached to the property and then you get the ones like um i've just explained whereas uh, they can't leave the earth plane because um they've had a massive wrong done to them and they can't rest Mm-hmm. So uh, you can actually send a, a spirit like that on, but it's usually better if if um, four or five of you do it. And there has been times when you've had to do it three or four or even five times because that spirit does a on go. So it's like layers, like an onion layer being released. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's so traumatic when it happens. It, it's really emotional and very often brings yourself to tears because you feel mm-hmm. the emotion as they lift. Mm-hmm. Well, Wonderful it's a feeling, though. Yeah, to lift the spirit and have all that light come down and in and, and bring it the peace and harmony back. Yeah, because most spirits just want to be with the loved ones who have gone before them. So um, when they're released, it's it's massive, you know. And and how many years did you do that, um, Faye? Oh, about four years. Yeah. So you learned so, you learned a lot about energy, I would think, and about spirit, and nothing like hands-on experience to to give you an experience, right? That you can put under your belt if you need it. <laughs> It's amazing what you capture when you leave a camera running and just leave it running in a close place that you think it's got energy and it's amazing uh, some of the film you get back. Mm-hmm. Well, from this, can we then go on to your extraordinary experience here on the Cosmic Oracle Show? We dedicate part of the show each each week to people to call in about their extraordinary experiences, either with extraterrestrial visitation or with a, a UFO uh, sighting or visitation. And this is a, a place that we hold here that people can call in. And we do have a call-in number. It's if you want to call in listeners and talk with Faye or talk about a story that, that you'd like to uh, relate to our listeners about an extraordinary experience, that number is 310-421-4053. That's 310-421-4053. And uh, we should be able to just bring you into the call and, and uh, Faye would... Uh, love to talk with you and so would I and I'm sure the listeners would be interested as well. I also have another number that's 909-809-5326 909-809-5326 and then so I think what we'll do now Faye is talk about your experience. This is kind of the why why I called you in the first place and was so excited about having you on the show and and uh, if you could tell your story, your true story with the listeners here today. Well, I've actually had the uh, three experiences, but my last one was my most uh, profound. But I can quickly just hit on the the first two. Um, the first one was uh, when I was around twenty years old. And um, we'd had friends round for the evening. It was 12 o'clock at night. And at that time, we used to have a a milkman. So the milk used to come in a glass bottle and you would wash the glass bottle and put it on the step for the milkman to collect in the morning and put a fresh bottle there. So to cut the story short, um, I washed the cups up because people had gone put the bottle on the step, and as I bent down to put it on the step, I heard this noise, and it was like a loud humming noise, and it went, "Mm -hmm." and I thought, what's that? It's 12 o'clock at night. Everybody had gone to bed. I looked up, and the only way I can describe it was like a massive, long, bright orange cigar shape and it was stationary and right above the house so as it made the noise it vibrated the color bright and low so as it went mm, it went bright and soft and bright and soft well I was so scared I ran in, ran in and slammed the door mm. <laughs> and then I thought 
it's still there because I could hear it. And I wanted to move the, the blind and look out the blind, but I was scared what might be looking back at me, to be honest. That's mm -hmm. how scared I was. But after five minutes, I uh, found the nerve to go to the door again and it was still there and it was there for quite a while. And I just went to bed, never thought no more about it. And then um, it must have been another 12 years on and uh, both my boys were going night fishing and this happened at two o'clock in the morning. I got up at two to pack the boys food up and send them off fishing because they were going at three. And uh, I just happened to look out the window and there was five stars in, in the sky and, and they were just like, I don't know whether you have dominoes in the US, mm -hmm. but they were like uh, the five in a domino, four in the square and then one in the middle. And I thought, that looks a funny star, you know, formation. I've not seen that before. And as I looked at them, they just started darting at tremendous speeds all over the place. And I watched them for a good 15 minutes mm. and uh, that nothing happened again. I, but that was twice I'd seen uh, odd shapes in the sky and things I, I couldn't explain. And then um, nine years ago, um, this is when my art began. Um, that was the most profound one. And a friend and I had um, been to a paranormal evening and it was... Um, in a place that was haunted by a, a young boy. So uh, we was talking to the lady who owned it, so didn't get away till midnight. And we had to drive home. I was with uh, my friend who worked with me. And, and um, we got in the car and we was driving along. And as we was driving along, there was a huge light coming towards us on the road, coming in the opposite direction towards us. At first, we thought it was um, the car with all the lights on and they just like one looked like one, one big beam. But it came at us at tremendous speed. And the nearer the, it got, the more big it got. And it, it was huge. And it, it was a sphere shape. And uh, it was so bright, you could hardly look at it. Uh, and it came at us so fast that we thought it was going to hit us. Mm. It was directly on the road in front of us, but filled the whole of the road. So as it came spinning towards us at a tremendous speed, my friend just slammed a foot hard on the brake. And as we came to the, a stop, it just went backwards and disappeared within seconds. Mm. And uh, we both just sat there in the car and, and couldn't believe what had just happened. Well, after that... Um, I worked with the lady who I was with in the car. So after that, two weeks later, about three o'clock in the morning, I had this overwhelming urge to get out of bed, get paper and pencil and start drawing. Never had any ambition to be an artist or anything. I'd always been busy with my family and, and jobs, you know, so I'd never gone to university or anything. I left school at a, an early age and... Um, just did mean your jobs nothing exciting but um anyway so um the, the the strange thing about it all was i didn't know why i was doing it it would start off with a line or a dot not knowing what's going to evolve or or the finished picture would be but the strangest part of it was i was doing it with, with my left hand and i'm a right-handed person uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, most of my drawings at the beginning were done left-handed and a lot of the writing came left-handed. And um, there's no way I could have done that right-handed, let alone left-handed. But um, the reason it, it came left-handed is because um, when you use your dominant hand, say you're right-handed, when you use your dominant hand, if I said to you, um, draw a house, your brain clicks in that picture of the house and you'll start drawing a house. But if I said to you, draw a house with your hand you don't normally use, you find it really hard to guide that hand and to get it to do what you want. 
And this is how it's kicked in because it's a straight channel. It's a clear channel because my brain doesn't dominate it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it takes some letting go, right? To you, So you just let it go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, if I get um, written work, it, it's just like somebody narrating the words into my head. There's no voice. It's, the words just appear and I write them, but it's done fairly quickly. So, so are you aware of what you're writing or do you have to read it no, afterwards? No. Yeah. No, lots of times it comes quickly. So uh, I don't realise till afterwards uh, what it's about. And, and lots of times um, I don't understand it either. <laughs> but, um, and, uh, do, you, do you understand? Do you think that the writing is, is for the people, right? Is it, is it um, more than for you? It's, it's a learning or an opening like a, you're being taught or it's a, definitely a, a portal that's open um, to, to this uh, information. Yeah, you see, um, sometimes um, the stuff I got was so scientific. I had to get a, a book on Albert I Einstein to understand some of it. Um, I've got a piece here, uh, what was given to me called en and its energy. Uh, and this was um, given to me and uh, I'll read it to you. It says, yeah. um, what's, what's the date on that one? I know we talked about this that you had. Actually, uh, did you do more art in the beginning and then writing or did you do writing and then art or was there a combination of the two? combination of the uh -huh. two sometimes uh -huh. um i'd get art and then writing to go with it sometimes just writing and would this occur like um in the middle of the night like your incidences at two in the morning or would it be during the day in the middle of the day or was there a particular time zone that you found that you would write or or paint or draw no no it, it'd be just like um, something would just occur what pushed me to do it and, and it was like I had to do it it was like a compulsion to do it something the bigger end, than yourself it was like bigger than yourself I, I just know instantly you, you know like um, say you've got food cooking and all of a sudden that thing in your head goes just <laughs> check the food it's like that and it's like all of a sudden Get your pen and draw, get your pen and write, uh, and it just, uh, and that's how instant it is and how normal it is to me now. Yeah, and, and how many years now has it it's been? Nine years? Nine years, been yeah. With this. So you've acclimated the process probably pretty well, right, in your body, and but you're still growing and changing, or? I've got a um, hundred books, which all contain, I think, about 30 pages with drawings in and information and that's without the written work and the diaries wow that's pretty phenomenal <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty mind-blowing when i think about it but um the thing where I, i've had to record everything uh, and and the fact that i've recorded everything makes it more viable as well because people can see I've not made it up or dreamed it or, or trying to be something you know no we can, we can tell you're you're the real thing or you you wouldn't be on this show you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean that there's always that doubt thing there isn't we uh, normal people <laughs> Well, and so yeah, if you, we would love to hear your some of your uh, writing that you started with and that you've chosen for us today. That's exciting. Okay, then. Um, well, um, like some of the scientific things, it just makes sense when you, you're giving it. And this was this is about energy. And uh, I'll read off what what was given and. It said energy is made up of vibration and vibration is connected to strings. The whole universe is held together by string formation. Strings cause vibration when energy is produced by sound waves going through them. This in turn creates what we call noise. Noise is intense vibration and our moods connect to the velocity of the noise vibration. Sounds that harmonize, harmonize with our personal 
vibration are pleasant to us, no matter how loud or soft. Noise that clashes or does not coincide with our own vibration can cause headache, nausea and mood swings. This is because it's out of sync with our body guitar, so to speak. It's like when a piece of music is out of tune or our car makes a noise that we are not familiar with. We know it's not right. The body protests and can cause all sorts of disruption. Once music or sound or music or sound or even just the noise of the planet we call silence is heard, we can then align and go back to the harmonious vibration and that peaceful feeling. This is why disruption and noise and lack of continuity cause the body to go into stress level where our only energy and vibration held together by mass. That's it. That's it. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So, uh, I bet when you read this to people, I bet every person has kind of a different reaction to it. Uh, I know for me, uh, what I heard in that is silence. We really need that silence. And maybe that's why when we go to nature and have that need or desire to be in nature is also the silence of nature as well. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what, what, what does it say to you what you just read? Um, well, um, to me, the silence is connecting back to the, the, the harmonious vibration of the planet. Mm. Uh, and by going into nature or, or walking by the sea or whatever, that's what that actually does. As once you're in nature and listen to nature, which is the heart of the planet, really, um, mm. you know, you, your body, it, it, it is like it says, like tuning a guitar. And all the vibrations that we carry within are, are like the strings of a guitar. And if they get knocked out of sync, then it causes all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. and, and as soon as you're aware of it, right, it's being aware of it is the first step, right? Like, uh, I don't feel good. That doesn't feel good to me. And then from that, then you can, you know, dissect of how you should let go of something. Did you get anything like that of how, let's say your body is out of harmony, the, some ways to help harmonize you and keep you healthy that way? Well, usually um, we've all had a headache when we've been somewhere with lots of noise and think, oh God, I just need to be somewhere quiet. Uh, and that's your body telling you that the, the vibration isn't working with you. Uh, and it's the same sometimes when you meet people and you just don't get on with them. There's nothing wrong with that person. It's just that the energies don't mix with each other. Mm. Uh, and that's that's what life's about, because we're all individual and we're all, all different. So we don't always have to be in sync together. Uh, that's why we have people who we can be close to and people who we'd rather spend distance from <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think all of our listeners can relate to that one well, i liked when you and i first connected i mean we just had this connection this the vibration lifted way up and it just felt great it just felt great and i'm sure our listeners are feeling that right now so yeah we've, we've all done it we've all walked away from somebody who's like oh well, that person really like does my head in <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be accepting that we're all the same. <laughs> now, if we just listen to that, right, instead of trying to just stay busy and, and, and deny it or be in denial of it, right, and just keep on going anyway, instead yeah. of taking that time to be aware of it and then uh, honoring the body and, and, uh, and caring for it and, and uh, nurturing wrong. it. Yeah. And so, and and would you like to read one more of your writings? Um, yeah, I'd like to uh, read Liquid Time. And this was given to me. Um, this was given to me by one of my guides. And um, what happened is I was given this uh, ball and it, it was like a glass ball. And uh, I, as I took it, um, this was during a meditation, as I took it, 
it felt all squidgy and soft and I didn't know what it was. So I, I asked what it was and they said it was liquid time. Mm. So being puzzled about that, I, I asked um, what liquid time was and uh, I was given a, a lot of writing on it and, and I can read that to you. It's not too long, so no, we won't get bored. <laughs> we don't, no, we won't. We're, I'm really excited about it. Liquid time, what a concept in itself, right? <laughs> yeah, well, um, liquid time is the essence of life given to us at conception and it stays with us until we take our last breath and descend into the beautiful existence that we all seek. Liquid time is a tool for living. You can shape your whole future by using your liquid time to do things at the right or wrong time in your life. I.e. like, it's time I got a new job. It's time I went to bed. It's time I had something to eat. It's time I looked up that friend. It's all based on liquid time. Um, the gift can be shaped molded or moved, slowed down or think, simply forgotten and shelved as a bad memory. We all have these. You can take any direction in life with your liquid time, but only you will know if it's the wrong or right direction. You and only you have that gut feeling of it being good or bad. How often have we ignored this, knowing deep down that it's not right for us? I believe that this is the prompt that liquid time gives us. Just like an actor who gets a prompt when he forgets his lines. There are happy times, sad times, times of change, time for action, time to reflect. The list is endless. There is something that a lot of people forget, and that is the most precious. The time for oneself and the time for all those whom we love. This time can sometimes seem so short because it goes so fast. Notice how quickly time goes when you're enjoying yourself or with someone that you love. And also how time stands still when you look at something beautiful. I am in awe of it. We have all had experience of time dragging on. This is usually when we are waiting for something to happen or doing something thing that we don't like you can use your liquid time to reflect and change it if you want to we are learning all of our life how to use liquid time so take it nurture it use it and love it and embrace life with it as it's truly a gift from a very great and wise source and that's it wow i that is like we we all need to we all needed to hear that today. I think you know, <laughs> liquid time, a tool for for living and memory and uh, direction and reflection and 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 we, all, we all think time rules us, but actually <laughs> we can master it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the timelessness of time, right? Itself, it's it's a concept that uh, we still try to put in a box. And can we actually really do that? You know? No, I don't think we can. Time's got a mind of its own, but uh, it's, it, it can still be put in order. <laughs> yes, true. It's true. And I have someone else trying to call in but it doesn't seem to be coming through and I'm not sure so this caller at uh, uh, 631 if you could call back again on the uh, let's try the oh let's try the 310-421-4053 and see if we can come in that way for some reason um, the call just dropped or you could try the uh, the uh, our other, my other number as well, the 809 uh, number as well, 809 503. Oh, I don't have it in front of me. You'd think I would know, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, are you on? Are you there, Rocco? Hello? Okay, I just thought I had a caller come in. So um, so we'll wait for him to call back in with a question for you too because we are taking questions today from you. But the thing on time, and it's, it's um, 
it's really beautiful. You're writing, you know, this is uh, extraordinary for me because I didn't know so much that you were a writer as well as an artist. You know, I, I fell in love with your art as soon as I saw your images. They spoke to me. And um, so the writing is, is really an extra treat to uh, have it. Okay, so we're going to try this again. All right. Here we go. Okay. I don't know why that didn't come on. That, are you? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. The the six three one. I'll have to try again. It just seems I start to pick it up and I just drop it for some reason. So I'm not sure why. Hmm. Well, we'll just stay stay with us for now. And six three one. Don't give up. Uh, try again. So. Um, I'm trying to add him and pull him into the call, and it seems to drop it. So uh, don't give up. <laughs> and so, so with time, since we only have like a, we have a few minutes before the top of the hour, uh, about your writings, and uh, do you have this in a book form, or is it uh, a way that do you have any of these posted on your website or your Facebook page, uh, Faye? Um, not at the moment, no. This, uh, uh, like I said, I've got over a hundred books with stuff written in. So, like, wow. it's like wading through the sea, <laughs> <laughs> through a sea of, uh, of of memory and a sea of information for you. Well, I think you have a book there, or a few books, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would I, you like? I, uh, I also get. Um, uh, information about space, and I'll do, this is a quick, quick one. I'll just Wonderful. Read it I was just going to ask you for one other one before, to fill us out for the hour. Yeah, uh, this is uh, something uh, I, I get information in, and it says um, the space infinity is a replica of times that were once in abundance on remote planets. The space and time program that was written at the oldest part of the space affinity was the only way that we could operate and come to a conclusion about the vastness and depth of the space radius. Only machines that could fly at tremendous speeds could recapture the infinity as it was in older times. This is an interesting bit. Go to the moon for answers of universal change that occurred long ago and that's sort of like some of the stuff i get mm. so there's um things to be discovered on the moon mm. it's very interesting <laughs> it, it it is it's 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 there's like a vastness to it, a limitlessness to it. And if we can get in touch with that, what does that say about us as humans? Are we just working on what we've been told or is there so much more to us that's available that we are just tap, starting to tap into that, right? I, I would think after your nine years of being with this, it must have changed you exponentially in so many ways yeah yeah um, it's all about uh, bringing mankind um, to 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 the way that we should be and and stop the wars and stop the greed uh, and like you was broadcasting earlier these things that are happening in Dakota it, it all needs to stop uh, and the best way for us to do that is is to follow our spiritual path and put on don't don't dive into the politics and that don't give it your energy be, be aware of it but we need our energies to go towards the world and peace and, and bringing the planet up to what she she should be and, and respecting nature and not using her as a, a tool for wealth mm -hmm. um, and and power and power yeah but, but <laughs> right. we we have the power that there's people who think they have the power, but we have the power. It only well, needs a little hole in the dam for the whole dam to come down. 
Yeah. And if we can unite as a species, a human species, and all of us unite, I, I think I, that's one of the things I love about the Stop the Dakotas Access Pipeline in the stone camp there is that it's a catalyst for change. It, it's, it, it is. So we'll stay tuned with us. And when we come back, they will talk to us about uh, her beautiful artwork and uh, some stories about how she came to be an artist, a galactic artist, of, of, of kind of a future artist in some ways. Stay tuned with us. And do it six years. Bigger and better than ever. You, the listeners, have made Revolution Radio what it is. The number one commercial free talk radio station on the web with nearly 24 hours of live programming delivering directly to you the most cutting edge information available. You, the listeners, have become some of our most popular radio hosts. You, the listeners, offer feedback that molds our programming to appeal to a worldwide audience. You, the listener, provide eyes on the ground, reporting about newsworthy events in your area, and you, the listener, are the lifeblood of this station. We love you, and thank you for being a treasured member of our Revolution Radio family. From all of us to all of you, have a happy and safe holiday season, and let's make this new year a success once again together. Thank you. Hi everybody, it's me, the Fetch, host of Inside the Eye Live. Before the Sunday mainstream media political pundit talk shows, there is Inside the Eye Live, where we break down some of the weekly mainstream media talking points before the talking points even get aired. Add in some entertaining stories, weather, cats, intriguing and informative guests, and you get one of the most listened to Saturday morning streaming media political talk shows going today. And it's all right here on our flagship station, Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. So join me, The Fetch, for Inside the Eye Live every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern. It is truly intelligent media for the politically aware. everyone, it's Barbara Jean Lindsay, the Cosmic Oracle. If you have questions about your past lives or future plans, need answers from the cosmos about your love life or career, or just want to keep your finger on the pulse of the planet, check out my show, The Cosmic Oracle, here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay, and welcome back to the Cosmic Oracle Show. And we have with us today Faye Vale, and we've been talking about some interesting subjects like liquid time. I just thought that was extraordinary, and uh, about how you started uh, kind of following your own intuition and your own power that was given to you by an extraordinary extraterrestrial uh, visitation along with yourself and a friend while you were driving uh, one late night, one very auspicious night, right, Faye? Yeah, that's right. (laughs) 
a game changer. And um, so we would we'll we'll be talking about her art coming up. But before we do, I would like to thank you, our listeners, for supporting uh, Revolution Radio and Freedomslips.com. Uh, we are the 100% listener supported station, and we're really thankful uh, to you for your generous support. And you are. Uh, a major part of our continued success at getting the truth out here, out on Freedom Slips. And if you'd like to keep us on the air, then find that donate button or that support support button and give whatever you can afford. No amount is too small and or too large, and we really appreciate your continued support. Right now, we're showing a $2,347 that was donated so far uh, this month, and we do need it to be at least, uh, I understand, $2,650 uh, per month just to get so we're not in the red zone. So uh, please uh, uh, give generously, and we really do thank you and uh, and are really appreciative of your support. And so, Faye, so now we'd like to kind of go and thank you for all of your writings. And where can people uh, connect with you, the best place? Would it be your website? I understand you have a website. Yeah, um, I have a website with uh, some of my drawings on, which is uh, www.galacticart.co.uk. I have um, three Facebook pages, my ordinary one, which is Faye Vale. And that's F-A-Y, second word, V-A-L-E. That's right, that's correct. And... um, I have a, a Facebook page called uh, Galactic Art where you can see my work also and you can make comments. And um, also, um, because I came out about my art and said where it come from and that lots of people um, who had had UFO experiences or extraterrestrial experiences contacted me. So um, I decided to get a page up on Facebook Facebook and it's called ET Connections and uh, I, I have, have over 80 members now from all over the world who um, have our experiences or abductees who can um, actually share their stories t- together which helps uh, when you you know you've got nobody to talk to or it's quite scary mm-hmm. so and so you have ET Connections 1, and then you have ET Connections 2, and that's for more of a private, uh, you can do it privately or publicly, correct? That's correct. Yeah. ET Connections 2 is because um, one or two members uh, didn't want to be recognized by people who knew them, so uh, they needed to do it more discreetly. And so they're honored there and, and respected with their stories. It's a safe place to hang out. Is that what I'm hearing, Faye? That's, that's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> and so if you wanted to, listeners, you can go to um, galacticart.co. Dot UK and look at some of Faye's artwork uh, while we're talking and and you'll see why I was so impressed with it and uh, what's some of your favorite things that you have up right now and can you talk about your art did is it pen and ink is it did you start doing acrylic or how did this all kind of start with the drawing um, um, well I told you like um a couple of weeks later, I just was had the impulsion to start drawing, but um, the, the the lady who was in the car with me had nothing, uh, and I couldn't understand why all this was coming about with me, and and, and she didn't get anything. But um, to answer that question, which I carried for about five years, I met someone who gave me a a deep regression to go back to the night when uh, I had the experience with the UFO and um, I was taken on board the ship and she was frozen in time in the car which explained to me why I got all this uh, thing going on and she had nothing (laughs) so uh, that was a revolution (laughs) yeah you know I found that that's not it's not uncommon 
conventional that someone will get it all the whole complete download and someone right next to them didn't get a thing it, I, and I, I that can be more common than what you would think it's very interesting it, yeah, uh, may, maybe it's because some people are, are more open to it happening to them than others like I say I, I'd had spiritual experiences so I, I was already a channel in a way, I suppose. Yeah. And so you were kind of being acclimated towards doing this all along without unbeknownst to you in some ways, but but maybe soulfully known for, for a very long time. Who really knows, right? That's right. Uh, but uh, there's no way I'd want my life without it now. It's too exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so quite magical. It, it, you found your calling. This is your mission, is is uh, giving your uh, art to the world. And it can be a, a conduit between the world. That's how kind of I see it from from my end. So by by being a, a watcher of your work and a, a fan of your work as well. Thank you. Um, the, the work's uh, very, very different, though. Um, uh, it's at the start when... Um, my drawings first came through they they started with um a couple of spirit people who'd been killed in a war who was in a a, a submarine a R russian submarine and i was given the name of the submarine and i looked it up on the internet and it was there mm -hmm. and the two spirit people who came through as a drawing were actually on the submarine that from some Marines, I started drawing, and when I say drawing, drawing in earnest, I was just drawing, drawing, drawing. Every spare minute, I would be doing it, and um, then it went from uh, I was drawing landing sites uh, like airfields, I was drawing tanks, warships, guns, soldiers, grave sites with with names where the graves were, and I looked those up. They were all there as well but what it was really leading up to from all the military stuff I, then i started drawing um, launch pads with rockets on and i'm thinking why am i doing this i'm not interested if i was a man then i, I maybe have understood it a bit more but being a lady and, and like you know just an ordinary housewife <laughs> Couldn't get my head around that one. No, yeah, let, let's, uh, here's dinner, kids, and uh, oh yeah, wait just a minute, I have to draw this launch pad in this airfield and worship, and I'll get right back to you with dessert, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we go, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is how the ETs work, and they're so clever, because rather than like some of that in-depth information I gave you beforehand, like the writing about energy, mm -hmm. um, they just slowly led me from things I understood, war things, not that I delved into it, but I understood it, mm -hmm. to launch pads and rockets, and from rockets it went to spaceships and other planets, and that's how, how I was taken on the journey, and it, it's so clever how they did that. Because if I'd have just gone on drawing these weird beings and spaceships, I'd have, it, it might have really put me off the trail, so to speak, because I would have been really scared. But it, it took me on a journey to it. Mm -hmm. So I'd already digested all that before, like, the revelation came, hey, we're on spaceships now. <laughs> 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 so uh, so your journey has been a journey of self-discovery, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. And uh, I, I get lots of information and, and stuff that I've never, I wouldn't even think of, you know? And it just blows you away. I mean, well, I'll, I'll just read this quick one. Mm -hmm. but, uh, please do, please do. Uh, in one of my diaries on September the 8th, 2009, um, I was I was given information that there'd be UFOs seen in the skies, and it even told me the, the areas over Britain where it would be seen. And one of them was Wales and Yorkshire, uh, and they would be seen on September the eighth, two o nine. So September the ninth, two o nine. I'm looking, searching through all the newspapers and everything to see if it happened, because I, 
I'd wrote it down and the weeks went by and went by and nothing was reported. And then um, in August the 3rd, 2010, it was reported in a magazine that on September the 8th, 2009, they saw a total of seven crafts of orange light on that night. It took them nearly a whole year to report it, but it came. So this person, it happened on that night I was given in the same areas, and this person never reported it till one year later. Huh. But it was, it was confirmation, and, and I've had confirmation on other things about wars in um, India and, and the unrest in Ireland. It's and, so you, um, but you question yourself along the way because you're, you still, you have that good, healthy, skeptic part of you as well, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, apart from all the drawings and that, um, I was constantly woken up several times every night with, with things in my bedroom uh, and. Um, you know, um, some, well, I'll just read this. This, this was um, May 2011. Okay. And uh, I'd wrote, um, what a night last night was constantly woken up from 11.15 to 2.13 2 with different shapes coming into my bedroom. The first one was a large ball shape above my head. I woke up and it was just hovering. It was a muddy grey, a muddy grey colour, and had intricate shapes holding it all together. It hovered for several seconds, then disappeared through the ceiling. I dozed off to sleep again, and half an hour later, I was woken up again. This time, it was a square-shaped object, and it went just went by in a straight line in front of me. It felt like it was collecting data. After dropping off sleep again, I was woken up for the third time. This time I could only describe it as, uh, remember those um, old CD racks you used to get where you just used to store your CDs? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, the only way I can describe it was like a, a storage, CD storage rack on its side. And that's what it reminded me of. That also just slowly passed in front of me. When I was woken up again, there was a procession of all shapes going past me slowly. They were all quite big and disappeared when they had passed. Feeling tired today, hardly having hardly slept, didn't go to sleep till 3.15. There you go. And then yesterday was endless and I felt very isolated. I've been drawing like mad and felt compulsed to draw all the time. Felt really governed by it lots of information coming through on past generations from forgotten lands i was getting really hung up as i was wondering why i'm getting all this and now i should do something um with it but what i'm not being given it for nothing so privileged but also such a drive to show the world I know I won't be understood and some may think I'm crazy but I can assure you that everything I log is true and our true experiences and then it goes on to talk about the cards I produce but um, there's page after page about stuff like that was in my bedroom and stuff I had so uh, it, it got to a point where um, at one time I didn't want to go to bed because uh, I was quite scared but then mm -hmm. it happened so many times that I just got used to it and it doesn't scare me now I just think oh what's that <laughs> <laughs> but at the beginning it is kind of scary because it's so out of your reality and how do you deal with it you know because you have no control over it either and so either you build a relationship with it or you know what are you what are your choices right you know, and what's interesting is that it's your husband sleeping right next to you when all this is going on and he doesn't get in yet, yeah. right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that's what's great about having your artwork because I, I think I read somewhere it's the art for the people, right? And that you're a messenger for the people. And it's something that you didn't ask for. It's something that was given to you as a gift. And then, you know, you get through the shock of all of it and you're kind of, it takes some time. Um, and then I see that after you've had it for some time, then you make it your own. And then once it's your own, then you feel like you can actually give it away because number one, you're not crazy. And uh, number two, you're not doing it um, for financial rewards. That's for sure. And, you know, you're only really doing it for the betterment of mankind. That, that's right. Because um, it, it's, uh, as I said to you earlier, um, there's lots of, messages in the shapes in the drawings and uh, they do actually uh, shift consciousness in your mind and it, it's the same as um, like Egyptian writing or, or, or Mayan uh, they, they all produce messages and, and we don't realize that they shift um, consciousness but they do that's why um Egyptian and, and Mayan writings have such a massive influence on us mm -hmm. and we find it intriguing yeah we I think we talked a little bit about about this this morning and it was where um where images can and like fine art uh say a thousand words in just a glance correct <laughs> yeah I mean um lots of time Sometimes I've given drawings away because I've just done them and then um, somebody's probably seen one and said, oh, my God, or it reduces them to tears because it mm -hmm. has such a profound meaning to them. Uh, and I just give give it to the person because it's not for me, it's for them. Mm -hmm. So that's where um, uh, it's not commercial because some drawings are actually uh, to change change people's lives and, and I've had it said to me that uh, it's changed their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, a lady who I've met recently who lives in Scotland, um, she contacted me on Facebook and I went to visit my daughter in Edinburgh, which is the centre of Scotland, and uh, met up with this lady and um, this lady saw one of my drawings and it's called Finding Home. Uh, and it's about connecting with other planets. Uh, and she just burst into tears and, and said it really touched her because that's how she would felt all of her life. Uh, and like things like that, you know, it just blows you away because mm -hmm. it, it, it's so it's such a, a personal and powerful thing to to get, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, it's it's beyond you. And yet you have to channel that you know, and, and find a resolution with that and calmness yeah. with that and harmony with that. And, and then I just see you taking it to up even more level up. It keeps leveling up. It seems like from, from viewing it from my end. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it and it changes all the while. And I mean, I as well as the, um, the art, uh, which I normally get, I have had uh, lots of art telling me uh, things, uh, drawings of Egyptians and past gods who were worshipped and um, a couple of pictures of um, one of a young boy lying in state in, in centuries ago. Uh, and I can't explain it. I, I really can't explain it. Uh, where it comes from uh, and also I get um, drawings of animals that live on other planet with planets with information that comes with them and uh, it's just well the animals have not come out yet <laughs> it's still on the drawing. There's more to come. <laughs> and 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 your drawings are they are they done with pen and ink or how are they? What medium do you use? Um, this is really weird because um, when I first had the drawings, they were either in pencil or charcoal. Uh, and I, if if I picked any other thing up to draw with, uh, like paint or ink or anything, it just didn't happen. Hmm. So um, that's how it began. But the, the reason that was is because like pencil and charcoal is uh, and uh, also pastel colours 
like I did lots of pastel art, they're so free flowing and you can actually use your finger to to move it about. Uh, and I think that was um, to feel the freedom of how to work, uh, because everything about the drawing has to be totally free. Mm. No not mind control whatsoever, otherwise it doesn't work. But um, and now most of, my, my, most of my art now is in in ink, but it's in uh, liquid ink. Everything has to be liquid because it's free flowing. I, I've, I've tried to paint. I went to a couple of painting classes think, oh, I'm an artist now. I can paint. Can I? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you don't know unless you try, right? You got to keep pushing it. So you I have to start doing it. Yeah. <laughs> So there's, it's real specific. So it seems like it's real specific what what you're to use and how this message is going to be conveyed. That's right. Huh. That's right. Huh. And can I ask you? Um, um, or I guess I will be asking you. Um, from from <laughs> nine nine years ago when you started, compared to now, what does your art look like then compared to now? All oh, right. When I first started, it was just scribbles like um, a one or a two year old would do. Uh, and and it, I did scribbles for about six weeks, just scribbling and scribbling. But then uh, I began to use coloured pencils. So a bit of colour came into it. And then one day I drew a fish. <laughs> And uh, I remember going to work and said to my friend who was in the car with me uh, on the night, oh, look, I've drawn a fish because she was actually laughing that I kept taking these uh, scribbles in to show her. <laughs> uh, and then from the fish, it, it just began then. Uh, and um, I've had uh, not only UFO uh, drawings, but drawings from, um, I don't know, do you know Chief Joseph? I, yeah, I've heard of Chief Joseph. Oh, um, I connected with Chief Joseph at one time, but he would only draw in um, charcoal. And um, I've got books with his whole life on about um, from when he was a boy, drawings of when he was a boy and his father learned him how to ride. And then uh, drawings of when um, uh, they, they tried to take their land, the the Indians land, the settlement, and um, both his brothers were killed, and, and loads of stuff that happened in his life, drawings of his wife when she was expecting their first son, and I had that for quite a while, and uh, also um, before that I had a, a 13th century monk who gave me lots of drawings of churches where... where um, Mary uh, Magdalene was hidden mm. and all sorts of information on that. And it sounds totally crazy. But oh, can we hear a little bit about that? that? That piques my interest, the Mary Magdalene. I just came from France and there was a chateau there that she spent time with and has a whole story. Winlay Chateau. You probably remember Oh, that. right. Yeah. Uh, can... Well, uh, uh, she was uh, pursued at one time because uh, they wanted to kill her. Uh, I didn't know all this. I just got it in writing and drawings. And, and she was hidden in, in several churches. And uh, I had quite a lot of drawings of her in churches and different ceremonies going on and whatnot. But, um, yeah, and uh, stuff about Jesus. And uh, I had writing from, from um, the, the, um, the guy who bathed, Jesus's feet when he was on the cross, all sorts of uh, and uh, lots of religious things and drawings of John the Baptist, loads of stuff. Hmm. But um, uh, it just blew me away because I'm not a deeply religious person. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying I don't believe in stuff like I do, but um, I'm not deeply religious person. Uh, but uh, the stuff I got was amazing. And, uh, Do you find that it goes in like it'll just be this one um, thought form like Mary Magdalene or um, a, 
uh, Chief Joseph, and it it kind of has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and then you're on to the next thing. Or yeah, it- yeah. Um, the um, the Mary Magdalene came first, and then um, uh, I I was with um, the the monk for a couple of years, and I'd get drawings of him in the monastery watering the plants, and sometimes he'd say, "I have to go now," and he'd go. <laughs> Uh, but he he handed me over to Chief Joseph, and and when he first did, I thought, oh, I don't believe that a, a, a red Indian called Joseph, no way. And I went on the internet, and there he was. <laughs> and, and then I I know I had Chief Joseph for a couple of years, uh, and then uh, the UFO stuff really started. But um, uh, again, you see, it was working me up up to it because like I went right back to to the Christ time and then on to Native American which is like amazing way to live Uh, and then on to like the war things and that and and the whole thing is a complete journey Mm -hmm. complete journey Mm -hmm. and so there's some intelligence to this then (laughs) It is an well, randomness. Uh, maybe not a far be off, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely a bit coming through. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and so to take it from from just a normal everyday mother, you know, doing the best she could be yeah. to to be a mother of her children, to be a good wife, a citizen of the community. And now to come from that in a period of nine years and really state, you know, to the world, I am a galactic artist. I, I, um, I get this information. It's my kind of like my gift to the world in a way. It is because, um, like, as I say to people, people will say, oh, wow, that's amazing. But I- I'll say to them, well, I'm just a tool because I am just a tool. If I had to produce that myself, I couldn't do it. Um, I'm just a facilitator, really. So, um, you know. Have, have you found that your art has become uh, um, a little bit more complex as you've developed it more, or has it become more simple, or do you see any weave of any of that information? Um, there's, there's both sides to it. Um, there's, there's art that's really simple, because the whole idea of um, them giving me this art is for understanding uh, and and it has to be as simple as it can so that it's just accepted but then there's other art that comes with the writing which is really in depth uh, and anybody who who has the scientific nature or or is really into this thing they get a lot out of that because they're seeking the information whereas the others are seeking the beauty of the art which, which talks to them so um there's two sides to it really mm-hmm. there's one of the um art uh, pieces that i liked it's called releasing the inner warrior um i saw yeah. that on your website can you talk a little bit about let's say that piece um yeah usually when it comes uh, like i say it begins with a dot or a line uh, but then then th- there's always a meaning with it and i'm seeing orbs in this room where i am while I'm talking, um, we've, we've obviously Yay! got we've a got, family. We've got the force with us. Woo-hoo! <laughs> but, uh, releasing the inner warrior is is all about. Um, you know, we all have a have a an inner warrior, and at times we um, we're not all the same. But a lot of us get downbeaten or downtrodden by others. Uh, and there's this little voice inside keeps saying, don't let them treat you like that. Don't take it. You can't take it anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, this little voice gnaws at you and gnaws at you until it becomes a big problem. And um, so what that painting or drawing is saying is, release your inner warrior. Like, throw a all them thoughts away and let your inner warrior come out and, and fight for yourself and you know explode in the glory that, that you are mm-hmm. uh, and that's what it's about 
Yeah, I, it, it's just a beautiful piece. I, I love it. I love all of your work. And the listeners oh, can you. look at your work at the galactic, and then it's hyphen art.co.uk. So that's wwwgalactic hyphen art dot co dot uk and i also you do uh art readings can you talk a little bit about that a reading in art uh by Fay vale yeah um, what happens there is um you can send me a photograph because I, I have to have a, a an image usually uh, you know facing me if you can so i can connect to the person and uh, when i connect i, I can get i just sit and draw a piece of art I never know what it's going to be and then uh, when I get the piece of art the the lines and the shapes and the colors in it will, will give me a reading on the person I'm doing it for so um, you get a piece of art plus um, a reading in art plus a personal reading and the conclusion of the whole art all in a really nice folder but um, yeah, and and the way they can get that it's it's still at uh, Fay Vale. That's F A Y V A L E at hotmail. dot co. uk. Is that yeah uh, yeah correct? Yeah. Okay, that's correct. That's correct. Fay Vale at hotmail. dot co. dot uk. And then there was something else that I really uh, was interested in that you also created were spiritual reading cards. Can you talk about those and and uh, how we can the listeners can get well, those as well? Well, they're also on my uh, website if you want to pack. They're, they're ten di- ten English pounds per pack. And uh, they're cosmic guides, and and what happened with these are oh, these were some of the first drawings I I got left-handed, and um, I just uh, knew I had to put them into cards, and and once I put them into cards, then um, I, I got the, uh, the the colors and the writing to to go with them. So. Um, and- I- did you have a deck there with you now? I can feel yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Could you draw a card for the Cosmic Oracle Show and our listeners today? Well, um, you pick a number and I'll see okay. it from a number. So, Okay. <laughs> uh, how many cards do you have total? There's 32 in the pack. <laughs> it's funny because I was going to say 33. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we'll go with uh, 16. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 13, 14, 15, 16. Now, um, some of them have got quite strange names, but, but this one, this one's brilliant because it's bright orange. Yay, my favorite color. And it's called Golden Goya. And I'll read what it says. Okay. Uh, Golden Goya is the god of heat. When I say god, these are star gods. <clears throat> the god of heat, fire, and passion. Call on him for all, all these things. Bathe in his warmth and feel the passion that he illuminates to fire up your soul. So I'll read, uh, there's a little book as well. So okay. with a simpler explanation in it, it says, um, stir up the passion in you for you know what fires you up. We'll all have a passion for something, be it art, reading, knowledge, outdoor activities, poetry, nature, music, sport. Sometimes though we have to get moving to renew our zest for life. Do something out of the ordinary. Go for that job you thought you'd never get. Visit another country or take a risk. After all, we all start at the start at the starting black block and it's up to us where we finish. Don't feel beaten up by life. Show it that you're up for a challenge. So um, this this is all about, you know, stirring up that passion within you. You know, we. We all get to uh, points in our life sometimes when we feel really, really stuck and think, oh, do you know, I'm so bored. And like you almost know what your next 
day is going to be like every day. That's the time, and this this relates to liquid time as well. That's the time when you've got to like fire up your passion and do something to change it because only you can change it. Mm. Okay, it might not change for the better in, in the first place, but at least you're moving. The whole point is to get you moving in life again and uh, get the old passion going uh, and exhilaration uh, and, you know, joy of life back into, into the slots where it's missing. So that's what that card's about. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, I'm a firewalking instructor, and so I I love fire. (laughs) (laughs) And steering up the people. That's what Cosmic Oracle Show is all about, is is steering up people and getting them out of their comfort zone, right? And try new things. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and what happens when you can stir yourself up and get that courage? It takes courage to do that, to get out of your your routine and try new things. It keeps you young and it keeps you more vital and keeps you passionate. And and I I see that with your work, Faye, that that you are really passionate. You're on the right track, and and you're a real um, leader and. Uh, um, that people can look forward to your work and have an experience with it that might be a catalyst for them as well in their life. So if they're listening in the, uh, to your work today, that's not a coincidence, right? That's right. That's right. And I did get a bit of uh, writing about the cards and it said, um, these cards are meant for the few who will understand the messages. Not many have reached this point yet, but they are beginning to trust. The light gods are the ascended masters and prophets of the future. Being on earth is a task we all have to undertake. How we evolve is up to us. Don't allow the feelings of others to bring you into dispute. You are strong and loyal and are trusted to go on and complete the tasks that have been beset you. There you go. So that's just a little help with the cards. Well, that's pretty profound. I I love the word trust in that. Isn't that an interesting word to trust? Yeah. Yeah. I I have have we forgotten to do that in some ways, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, because um since uh, the internet became like uh, the beating heart of the planet. <laughs> there, there's so many things fly around that um you can question so many things, but you have to trust and you have to go with your gut uh, and to, to like reach what the genuine thing is that, that you need to take in uh, and anything else, just discard because it's not meant for you anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so and part of that is, is walking in balance of all of this, right? And like with you... Like when you first have a UFO or ET or extraordinary experience and start to acclimate that it takes time and to be gentle with yourself and to know that you're not going crazy, that that you're not alone and you're not isolated. And I see that with your work, it, it helps bring people together and bring the conscious uh, together and, and express that you can not only have it, but express it. That's right. We, we, we all have to be who we are. Uh, I mean, before um, gay people came out, they, they never um, could express who they really are. And, you know, you have to be true to yourself and be who you really are. And, and like I said to you earlier on this, this morning, those who need to connect will connect and the rest will walk away. And that's the way you, you have to live this life. Mm-hmm. And and with you, you started off just as a as a mom doing your thing righteously. So, and how about now today? Uh, what's your life like on a normal day? Let's say of. of, of... <laughs> I never have a normal day. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're open, right? You're open. Just give it to me. I can handle it now or, or you know. <laughs> but you still are respectful, right? Oh, yeah, I can, you know, be gentle with me, you know. <laughs> 
And so is the room get crowded where you're in or, you know, when all those guides show up or do you have one that you particularly work with or, or like you said, the orbs came in, you know, the room and you're aware of them now, you know, it's just. Yeah, lots, lots of times um, you hear strange noises, suddenly somebody will go clash or, or something. And uh, at one time uh, uh, when my husband, was home as well we, we we had a glass just explode <laughs> and it had been on a shelf for two years <laughs> and it just exploded but uh, very often get orbs or or you know things that you can't explain mm -hmm. and so it just it's the way you walk your walk your talk now it's the way you walk your path it's the same as anything. Once you get used to it, you just accept it. it, it mm -hmm. It's the same as the connection with people. You either connect with it or walk away. Uh, and uh, you still have choices in life. But uh, it, it, if uh, you have an experience and it won't leave you alone, then that's because you've already contracted to do it, <laughs> unbeknowing. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and so, so... A lot of your work then is based on energy or vibration, and and I liked what you had said earlier about the string formation, that the strings that cause vibration and the sound waves go through, and, and then you just get in tune with that, and before you know it, how long does it take you to do, let's say, an art piece? Is it a, a normal, or you, do, do you ever close your eyes and draw, or do you, do you uh, keep your eyes open? I usually, I usually do it while uh, I I can do it while I'm having a conversation or watching TV. Usually, when my mind's distracted by something else, huh. and then it just comes in. But um, some pieces are drawn really quickly, and uh, if I do larger ones with messages, um, I think the most it's ever took me is three days on one, and that was a really big one. Huh. Um, but, um, do you find yourself doing larger pieces, or do you have a desire to do a lot? larger piece or a, a landscape or 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 just stick mainly with portraits or well like I say I never know what I'm going to get because I, I have had uh, landscapes in the beginning but they've got spaceships on them <laughs> and, <laughs> and I strange noticed, strange I noticed strange you have a uh, hieroglyphic style writing I thought that was interesting too I know after yes. my experience, I just still keep drawing spiral after spiral. That seemed to be my symbol afterwards, were spirals and uh, connecting the dots, you know, with your experiences that you have uh, to try and and work with them in this three dimension, right? This third dimension is working with that. And and art can is a, a healing and expression of of that experience. That's right, that's right. And when, when I first had the writing, it, it was very similar to Egyptian hieroglyphics. And uh, I bought a book on hieroglyphics to try and match it up, but um, it doesn't really uh, resonate with, with it. Uh, odd, odd sort of um, symbols connect and a couple of uh, Mayan symbols connect, connected to it. But... Um, uh, I was showing what, someone some, uh, one day and they said, well, you're already connected, you're getting it, so why don't you ask it to be translated? And I thought, well, I never thought of that. So next time I got some writing, I, I said, um, I just wrote, question, can you translate that into my own language, please? And, and now if I get writing, I can get it translated into my own language. Uh, and I just write, write write it in my own writing underneath but I don't really know what I've wrote till after I read it and mm -hmm. and some of it's uh, really mind-blowing because uh, you still don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I know I've had some people say can you slow down what you're receiving or can you speed up what you're receiving you know depends on on your body and and your who you are too is when that information comes sometimes it's too fast and if you I love that where you say put it in my language now and present time because that helps everybody doesn't it <laughs> of course it does because it's like what we don't realize where the, the, the it's the same like we are it's a two-way connection and if you're receiving then then they have to be listening and and if that 
they want to if they want to be in partnership with you, then then they've got to give as well. So um, what's the point in giving me a, a big page of writing? I, I can't understand that I can show it to somebody and they can go, oh, wow, where did that come from? But it means nothing because you don't know what they're talking about. So it just makes sense to me and them that, that I can understand it. But I still do get odd words, even in uh, like the English language that uh, I've never heard of before. But <laughs> I'm, somehow, I'm somehow familiar with <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, you know, I just see with you with that you're a very grounded uh, being. You have practical application. You know, you're not, you know, it, it, it feels structured but opened at the same time, you know. Yeah, well, I think that's the only way you have to be. Otherwise, uh, you know, maybe you could go crazy with it. it, it it's, you have to be like that because... Um, Otherwise, you can be somewhere else, and and that's not good because uh, we've got to live an earthly life, whatever. Uh, and we're here to teach, and we're here to learn. So, so, you know, we have to walk to. I always feel like I've got one foot on the earth and one somewhere else. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, you have to find the the bit in between and the hope that you stay there. <laughs> Well, yeah, and that you can walk between those two worlds. You can that's walk right. between. You can feel comfortable receiving and you can be comfortable being a conduit and then you can be comfortable uh in between both of those just by being your human self having this experience you know now well i mean it, it's not really unlike dreaming is it because like when we're dreaming we're not on the earth plane we're, we're not we're, we're not aware that we're laying in bed asleep we're somewhere else mm -hmm. uh, and like so it's not unlike that but uh maybe a larger experience but yeah. uh, it's still the same thing you're in two places but that doesn't scare you because it's something that happens all your life right and, so, and, anyway. and are we multi-dimensional beings what we're looking at that's more of a yes than a no <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. And uh, is there any last uh, message you'd like to give to our listeners? Well, um, I have got some writing to read. I've got some poetry, but we can do that another time. But um, what I'd like to read is this, and it's um, okay. let's dedicate our next days to ourselves for a change. We always seem to put ourselves behind everyone else or behind all that we have lined up to do in the next few days. So let's begin by stopping for a moment and see how we feel. Tired, sad, happy, excited or just can't be bothered. Now ask yourself why. Why are you feeling these emotions? And you can work on them to feel better or you can ride on them to bring in more of good energy you have created. We all have choices and we all have strengths and weaknesses. That's just human nature. No judgment. I know everyone does their best for others, but sometimes we need to do our best for ourselves too. After all, we are our own keeper and we reap what we sow. So the next few days, can we start by sowing the seed of well-being? Let's all all bury self-doubt, self-low esteem, bad memories and also negativity that can strike at any time and catch us unawares. So we have opened up our energy furrow. Now let's prefer, uh, prepare our life soil. Let's dig deep to protect the new seedling. Let's give it water so the roots grow strong and healthy. Then as we see it emerging, it produces beautiful leaves that shine in the sunlight. They also protect it from the gust of wind that make it feel, may make it feel a bit off balance at times. Some stems are straight and some may be a little bent by the elements they have encountered, but they all seek the light and warmth to grow. When they reach the stage of completion, all of a sudden the most beautiful flower opens to reveal its colours and captivating perfume. Then after the flower comes the fruit that's so mouth-watering you want more. And it's also good. So when we leave tonight, let's water and care for ourselves. So we grow to live, live and flower in our own garden, a garden that also produces the fruits of life. 
to fill every soul with abundance in so many ways. So have fun in your garden of life and enjoy some peace it holds for you. Wow, that's beautiful. It just oh, really is beautiful. And so we'll leave our show today with an with our listeners to nurture their own well-being, right? That's right. That's really beautifully said. And they can contact you at, um, uh, I have it here right in front of me, uh, at galacticart-co.uk. They can find you on Facebook, Fayvel, that's F-A-Y-V-A-L-E, or Facebook on ET Connections 1 and ET Connections 2. And we want to thank all the listeners for coming in. Thank you so much, Fayvel, for being an amazing guest on the show today. Thank you for having me, Barbara. It's been <laughs> great to share. <laughs> and I've just, part of me just goes right to Glastonbury Tour, one of my favorite places. And the green there is like no other in the world. I love the oh. green the greenery there so um we'll see you next week everyone and you can reach me uh the cosmic oracle at uh the cosmic oracle on facebook or barbara jean lindsay.com that's b-a-r-b-a-r-a-j-e-a-n-l-i-n-d-s-e-y.com thank you everyone nurture your well-being and we'll see you next week A holiday message to our listeners. Revolution Radio is you. Thanks to your continuous support and participation, Revolution Radio will embark into the six year bigger and better than ever. You, the listeners, have made Revolution Radio what it is the number one commercial. Enter into a world unseen on Raven Star's Witching Hour. You will encounter eclectic topics from the realm of spirit brought into our matrix of truth. With your host, the Solaris Blue Raven. Solaris will bring you an array of unique guests covering topics from ghostly spirits to amazing anomalies, covert technology, UFOs, and shadowy global events. And that's right here at Revolution Radio FreedomSlips.com, Saturdays, midnight till 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Let the magic rise.